How are you? Hello, my friend. <laughs> We're back. I'm doing how, well. How are you? How does it happen so quick? How how are we back so quickly? This is like I thought we were just on here. Oh, the weeks just fly by, don't they? It seems like <laughs> yesterday. It seems like yesterday I was in my robe speaking with you. <laughs> we already got seven viewers, just like that. Seven awesome. viewers. Welcome, <laughs> welcome, seven viewers to Nightcap with the Landy guys. Cheers. Bill, Bill Blanchard. All right, cheers. Yeah, what are you drinking tonight, Scott, for the uh, nightcap? What are you starting with? I'm starting with uh, a little bit of Maker's Mark. I, I don't have much in my liquor cabinet right now, so what do you uh, got tonight? Um, I got a nice 15-year-old whistle pig. What? what? But that's not it. I have another one, but I'll save that for our special segment. <laughs> so that listen, looks we, phenomenal. We got a big show, right? A lot of things happening tonight. We got a lot of things happening. You're right. We uh, we have special guests. We special have special guests. give special giveaways. Giveaways. We have a giveaway. Giveaways. We haven't really talked about how we're going to make that roll. Uh, hey, Kevin. Hey, Paul. Look at this. We're hey, guys. Yeah, Eric. How are you? <laughs> Barbara Thibodeau. Uh, Aaron Siemens. Look at everybody's coming here. This is awesome. What's um, up, Aaron? Oh, we got who's a special guest? Laurie, you're awesome for buying that. Oh. She's talking about the whistle pig. It is. I've been waiting for that. I had a little bit of a land deal go down today, so I said I'm going to go buy the 15 year old whistle pig. And so, you nice. know, yeah, yeah, I had a land deal today too. You know? Yeah, awesome. I love it. Good, See, good, good terms deal today for me for us. So that's good. Cash. Mine was cash. Well, hey, cash. You know? I, I like cash. Look, we're rolling to in. Each, like, we to each his own. own. We can't even keep up with the comments. Wow, this is a good start to the show. There, there's Bearland with his claw. <laughs> Matt Forbes. Oh, yeah. Love it. Robin Swivel. Uh, Roy Cudler. Hey, Roy. So, um, listen, we got a lot. Like, we advertised that we were going to talk about something special tonight, so we'll probably do that. And what was that? Negotiating tactics? Is that what it was? Yeah, I think, you know. Uh, it's something that's touched upon often in the community is uh, how to negotiate with folks on the buy side. Yeah, so, we're the buy side. So we, so we came up with some good tactics. So we, you know, we didn't come up with them. These are the real tactics that happen. We're just going to talk about them, right? We, uh, we, we may have come up with some special terms. <laughs> we, we may have coined some terms to make it easier. <laughs> loving it, loving it. So, Scott. What's uh, anything big this week so far? We're on Wednesday. I had a deal that went through. Uh, can you, you want to tell us a little bit about that deal? Tell you about the deal? Sure. So uh, let's see. I purchased this lot for twenty two fifty. Yep. Uh, got five hundred down today with my two forty nine document processing fee. Right, nice. And we're, we're going to get two forty a month for sixty months. Very nice. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah, it's a good deal. We'll have our money out uh, in the first nine months, I think. No, maybe maybe a little less than that. Seven or eight months, maybe. Scott Todd always talks about that ten month buy, right? So you you, you beat right. that. And uh, hey, Aaron, thanks, Chris. Great to have you. I was talking to Chris today. Great to have you on the show tonight. So, yeah, I'd say it was a cash sale. It was like a $2,000 purchase for $8,000 something, something, uh, uh, you know, it was a cash sale. So it was pretty good. Great. I thought about it that, nah, I didn't do anything. <laughs> it was handled so, by uh, the my whistle, pig, my whistle pig is in the mail then, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. We're going to meet in Chicago. We're going to meet in Chicago for some of this whistle pig. So we'll Meet in Chicago. <laughs> so listen, uh, <laughs> I think we should bring up our guests right away. We don't want to make them wait because you know the longer we wait, the wait that we wait, the more likely we're going to have technical issues, right? I mean, it's okay. just we're uh, the written with technical issues, so we're gonna we're gonna bring them up. You want to do the intro, or what, what do you want to do? We'll bring the guests in, and then we'll do the the negotiating tactics uh, after that. So yeah, thinking? absolutely. Awesome. Okay, so we have yet to have a couple. They're coming on up. the show. Get it up! Here they come. So everybody, oh. welcome John and Valerie Burnett, please. Oh. <laughs> Hey guys. Oh, hi. So listen, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep, we, we can, can hear, hear you. you. Yes, Scott. Yeah, I'm good. Oh, wow. Matt Forbes would be proud. This is a proud oh. moment right here. <laughs> Everybody is on the show and we can all hear each other. This is awesome. All right, yep. Scott. Let's do it. Oh, so, so Matt, 
Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so John and Valerie, uh, we'd like to introduce you to the community. I, I mean, I think you've been in the community a while, but uh, we would like to hear a little bit about your backstory, how you discovered the Land Geek community and uh, how things are going for you and where you currently are in your journey. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, we discovered, um, so we, we, Moved to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, about two years ago, almost. And when we were heading over there, that's where Valerie's family is from. Um, and we listened to um, the book Cash Flow Quadrant on the way over by Robert Kiyosaki. Um, typical. And um, so, listen to that, kind of change our perspective on the way we think about financial freedom. And so, yeah, it completely like switched our entire. Mind frame, we were in employee land that yeah. whole time. That's yeah. a great book. It's a great yeah. book. Yeah, like both of us. I mean, I I had like literally told Valerie, I never want to start a company. I always want to be an employee. I don't want anything different. And right. then you know, we kind of listened to that book, and it it shifted our mindset to the point where we started thinking about real estate investing, and then from there moved to Jackson Hole and. Um, got involved in a relative, um, which was managing a real estate property management and reservations company um, over there. So, which was, it took a lot of my time. We've got two kids. Um, at that time, they were both under two. Yeah, and, well, actually, we just had one at that time. And yeah. I was pregnant. Okay, so, all right. So, and then John went back to that 40 hour a week job. You know, and um, the, the hardest part about the whole thing was that John was home about 30 minutes to an hour when Gideon was awake. Yeah. And, yeah. Hard, you yeah, know, it's just like, you know, and it just got us thinking. We're just like, we really need to change the situation. Yeah. Really need to change it. And then we were about to have our, our daughter and, um, you know, paternity leave. It, it's tough because it was a vacation area. And so when everybody else is and having fun, you know, it's tough to get time off. And so our uh, our daughter was about to be born. I was looking at a couple of days of paternity leave. And so we kind of decided that it was time to. Yeah, we were like, a- wow, this is like, we don't have flexibility. Yeah. We're seeing the kids really not very much, you know. Yeah. And so that became our why behind the whole drive. We just really needed to understand why we needed to go forward yeah. with a, a plan. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so from so there, find Mark. So we yeah. found Mark um, through. I was listening to a. I, I've been listening to Kevin Butts podcast a lot, and Mark came on as a guest. Val and I had already purchased an educational program for single family um, investing, and so we were really digging into that and looking into wholesaling. It just didn't look like it would work remotely, and we had to do it remotely. And it didn't look like it was going to work with two kids. And right. so, it just um, was a huge time commitment. Yeah. We would have had to travel. We would have had to like go pick out the houses ourselves. And yeah, then, it's just it was it was a lot, but we were trying to do it. Yeah. we were trying to keep going with the program. Yeah. So and so, I listened to Mark as a guest on Kevin Buck's podcast, um, and it just made a lot of sense. Um, yeah. So I never thought about land investing. Land investing up until that point, I would have said if anybody was investing in land, that you're a crazy person. Um, and <laughs> just found a lot of people who have bought land. Yeah. Who like are underwater now, and we're just like it. Just yeah. Weird concept to think yeah. about land at all. Yeah. Um. But um. But yeah. So we came. So I came home. Um. Our our daughter was about three weeks old at that point, and. Um, and I talked to Val and just said, you know, you should listen to this. We should think about doing this. And so we hopped on a call with the coach um, after we listened to that. It just made a lot of sense. And then we um, took advantage of the refund for our other educational programs, which the class to flight school and just haven't really looked back since. Yeah. But, wow, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, we took flight school, and that was amazing. We just were so just in awe that – that people were willing to share this amazing system. We were like, this is, this sounds like it works. And 
why are they giving this away? And this is so <laughs> wonderful. And so and it sounded like really doable for us. We're like, okay, we're in, we're, we need to do this remotely. You yeah. know, we need to be able to do that. And so, um, so anyways, we get to the end of um, the whole program, which was amazing. And then um, got to the end and Scott does this like really, um, inspirational speech at the end and really what it is is he's telling us how excited he is because our lives are about to change you know right. and I mean honestly like you know and Scott was really really genuine about that you know he's like this has changed my life so much and I'm so excited to see what happens to your guys' lives and I just was like crying <laughs> yeah. because I knew that it would change our lives too because we were going to work hard to yeah. get this to go and we were going to do this because we needed to um we really needed to spend more time with our family we just wanted to do other things besides you know a, a nine to five job anymore we had so many goals and ambitions that really would be way too hard to accomplish outside of a business like this so yeah anyway so that ended and we immediately were like we need to go into coaching you know we don't want the momentum to stop. Um, and uh, so we were both in agreement that we really needed to get into coaching right away. Awesome. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we didn't want the momentum to stop. We wanted accountability. You know, right. we knew it was not going to be an easy thing, you know. Scott talked about um, all the dips we were going to experience, and we knew that was going to be a real thing. And so um, – we are so glad we did that. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Really, John, how's it working? Uh, you know, the two of you, you both decide to take different aspects of the business. You know, you, you know, you know, working together as a couple, you know, can be challenging, right? I mean, so how have you managed to keep things kind of just flowing smoothly uh, with the yeah. two of you? Is one take one aspect and one take another, or how, how have you done that? Yeah. So the um, so the way we started things, so Valerie took over, kind of all of the, the sales side of things. And she was also handling kind of do, or the um, uh, property intake aspect of the company as well. And then I was handling the mailing and marketing and, um, and a good chunk of the due diligence as well. And so. So, but the goal was to be honest, to get John to be the person doing the business because I have a small, small baby. I have two small babies and I really needed to just focus on the kids and I needed to focus on the house and just like keeping things together. And so we, we worked for about six months straight, um, waking up at five in the morning. I would do the follow-ups at 5 a.m. Then we would get our day started. I would also like during nap time do the, um, um, do the leads, I would actually just like only have an hour to do the leads. And right. then, um, and John was working during his lunch breaks um, to do uh, marketing. Oh no, and at five in the morning too. So we're both yeah. working at five in the morning, lunchtime, naps, and then we would work um, after we got, John got home too. But we knew it was gonna be worth it because we really needed to fast track this thing so that John could go to this full time and I could become just a full time focused mom. Yeah. That's and awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think like as a couple, it's been, it's been really helpful for us because we've been able to a just like hold each other. I mean, keep each other excited about the business, you know, and as we go through dips, we're there for one another throughout that. And then I think the other thing is just like having another personality, you know, I, I tend to be the Mr. Paralysis by analysis person um, yeah. and Valerie is just take action. And so between the two of us, you know, we kind of take action and we do it thoughtfully. And That's awesome. It's been great. Yeah, and I think it's really important that we started it together because we really did like experience a lot of like downs. Like I was like, I haven't made a sale in like a week or two and you know, you just feel down about it. Yeah. And so John was just like, keep moving your feet, keep going going and the other thing is that eric one time we um we were really getting tired we were like this is getting too much and eric was like i want you guys to keep going don't slow down unless it's going to ruin your marriage <laughs> yeah. and he's like you know you're going to do this he's, you know so that was like awesome 
with coaching, he just kept pushing us and pushing us um, and, you know, keeping us on track. And so that was what really got us to where we are today. So well, that's Eric Peterson. We want to make sure everybody knows we're talking about Eric Peterson here. Yeah. That's, that's a shout out to Eric. He is incredible. So he's been great to keep you guys on track, it sounds like, right? To keep. Uh, yeah, we begged him. We, we begged him. Like, we were like, can we just, like, you know, <laughs> stop working at night, like, for, like, the last hour we're we going to do it and stuff? And he was like, you know, keep going. You can do it. <laughs> we were like, oh, we thought you were going to let us off, you know, <laughs> but he was just really good. He kept pushing yeah. us out really important um I think, uh, I think it's a good point you made too that you can do this business to at whatever odd hour you can fit right you talked about having specific times a day that you would have an opportunity to do something and you can you can fit it in like that right it's not it's not doesn't have to be done at a certain time of the day so you can fit random opportunities and you can take those random opportunities to bring things in so yeah I that's think you nice because you know, you think about it from the customer's point of view, and they're calling on Craigslist. So they think they're calling somebody that it's not like a business that they think they're calling. They they think they're calling an individual person or family, you know. And so John had to keep reminding me of that because I really only had about an hour a day to work on it, you know, during mm -hmm. bad times. And so I just had to pray that that would be enough time and that my faithful work would pay off, you know. So, um, but it it did, and slowly but surely, I mean, we're not like this success story quite yet. I mean, I think we are a success story, but um, we worked hard and we worked faithfully, and that started just producing a lot of leads and fruit and you know, just consistently, consistently enough to start building up our passive income to the point where, you know, now John's able to work this full time, yeah, and now I'm awesome. able to mom. So. We also had to make a decision, though, um, another decision to move. We were living in a really expensive place. Yeah. So, yeah, so we, um, so now I'm doing this full time, and we basically, we, we um, moved, and um, in so doing, we reduced the expenses um, by about 75%, and so we're able to do this full time, which is really exciting. Oh, that is awesome. Good for you guys. It's great. So, um, so I'm working on this full time. I'm able to do some consulting on the side if I need to. And, um, so, and uh, John, let me, let me ask you from, from the time you started to the time you, uh, quit your job and started doing this full time, what time frame are you looking at? What? So it was about six months. Six months say. since I'm like starting flight school. Uh, wow, um, that's amazing! I mean, that's amazing if you can quit your job in six months and and yeah. work full time in this well, business. You know, that's and phenomenal. it takes a lot of like just like cutting your expenses too. We yeah. learned that. We learned that in the cut in the cash flow game. I don't yeah. know if you guys have ever played that. Love the cash flow game. I play with my kids. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, one of the things that helps you get out of the rat race is to decrease your expenses. Yep. So that's what we're doing in our, you know. Yeah. Um, so that we're able to just our, our passive income is going to exceed our expenses pretty soon. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I'm really uh, – it's awesome to hear that. I mean, that's we always talk about that being the first goal of anybody. We take the – whatever your fixed expenses, have your you know passive income meter exceed that, and, and it just opens up a window of time, uh, yeah. a window of space that can bring such uh, – you know, a big change in people's lives. So that's 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 incredible. And, I, uh, and the biggest success to the whole thing, and John and I had to calculate this out today, but John is went from spending one hour a day, yeah. a day with the kids, maybe like it was yeah. a half an hour to an hour, and now he's with the kids four to five hours a day. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, that's that's phenomenal. Yeah. 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 Good for you guys. We got a lot of good comments coming in for the two. And our boys like. Daddy's home. Daddy's home. Oh yeah. Home. <laughs> we, um, before we before we moved, we um, we all got hand, foot, and mouth disease, which was terrible. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh! That's not a good yeah, start, right? Yeah. We walked in the house for seven days. <laughs> yeah. it, was really special. It, was, it was just awful. But um, but I was home for a full week, and like the one thing that um, that our son um, kept on saying, he said it, you know. Like dozens of times every day is daddy's home, daddy's home, daddy's home. That's so awesome. Yeah, and it's just like that's that's. I mean, close. so I mean, Mike, Mike, that's just an an example right there of what this business brings you. It's yeah. not it's not only it's not only money. 
right? Oh, it's, right? It's time and it's connections with people that mean something to you. And uh, I mean, that's for me what this business provides. It's, yeah. it's, it's more than just the numbers on the spreadsheet for sure. Yeah. And, and I think, and I think Mark really mm -hmm. conveys that, you know, through his actions and through his, through his actions in this community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know that I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy for you guys. That's a, that's a powerful story. And uh, you guys are, you guys are rocking it. So that's awesome. And Scott, do we bring us to our first segment? Well, okay. What? First segment or what? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? All right. Let's go in the first segment. Let's we're gonna do the we're gonna do the Facebook. Ready? Yep, here it goes. It's real technical. Facebook here. <laughs> quote of the week. It's the Facebook quote of the week. Here we go. We're very high tech on this show, guys. Can you tell? We don't we spare no expense. <laughs> All right. So let me find it here. I think our Facebook quote of the week quote of the week actually belongs to one of our viewers. He was on here earlier anyway. I saw his uh, icon. Uh, Aaron Vernon. Okay. So on here. Aaron posted this last week, and I thought we should give him some props. This was after uh, boot camp. He said he wasn't at boot camp, but we always talk about boot camp magic, right? So he said, I don't know if it counts, but I closed on a $25,000 deal during boot camp, and I'm not even there. Cash in hand. Yeah. <laughs> cash in hand, down payment, and signed papers today on a 10-year contract. Nice. That's definitely uh, the Facebook quote of the week right there. I love that. And then I will give an honorable mention to Sandy Marrero. All right. She, uh, she posted a very inspirational picture on uh, on the Facebook group of a guy climbing a, a mountain that said, uh, I will persist until I succeed. Wow. Very nice. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Yeah. So, Aaron, congratulations on that deal. That sounds like a monster. Awesome. If you're, if you're there, throw up a comment. But, yeah, we're happy for you. Well, John and Valerie, thank you so, so much for coming on and talking. We really do appreciate it. I think, you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of uh, look at this right here, great guests. Thank you for sharing. We got a lot of positive comments here. I think that you guys uh, really are inspiring to people that could maybe look to do this business and wonder how they could work together as a couple and look to see what kind of changes they could make. So, Thank you for coming on the show. We really do appreciate it. Yeah. Well, thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. us. Yeah. 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 All right. Talk. All right. Well, so uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. We're gonna we're gonna push you back down to the lobby now. You'll still be able to watch the show down there, so don't worry. It's, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much the two of you. Uh, <laughs> All right. Awesome. That was awesome. How do you think, huh? That was, that was great. I mean, that's that's a very inspirational story. I was. I was kind of yearning for a story like that when we started talking about. I can tell I you, I can see the yearning all over you. <laughs> <laughs> all I'm saying is that's what I was hoping for when we called a couple on here. I just had a feeling that we would get that from someone. So, listen, um, I, I, my, my cup's empty. I got to bring up my it. cup is my cup is is empty. Right. So I'm bringing up our next guest for that quick uh, little. Uh, uh, um, Part of the podcast, okay? I'm bringing him up because this segment belongs to him. Yeah, he, he Phillips, created this up. segment. Our Are refill doing, guy, guys? Matt, Are can you hear us? All right, Matt, how you doing today? I'm great. How are you guys? Oh, we're great. Thank you for joining us for the refill segment. Yeah, yeah. Matt, today we're uh, today we're drinking the Maker's Mark refill segment here. So if you're out there in Facebook land like me and you're out grinding on this business because you're new and you're not those two who are amazing, then raise your glass, take your liquor, pour it in, and have yourselves another cocktail. And, oh, boy. Oh, that happened. Oh, that's unfortunate. That, that, hey, you want some of my 1050? <laughs> I better get a land sale to pay for another one of those. There it is. Cheers, boys. Wait, Cheers. I have a question for you, Matt. Cool. Yes, sir. So uh, I want a couple quick questions while we get you on the show. Just you know, why not? Why not, why not ask you questions? Okay, take a sip first, though. I don't want to hold that sip up. Okay. <laughs> Matt, I got a couple quick questions. Any? I, I'm curious. Favorite inspirational book? Favorite motivational book? Favorite book that you've read recently? Anything? 
Oh, well, you monkeys have me reading the twelve, the twelve week year, uh, twelve week year right now. Okay. Um, favorite motivational book? I read a lot of sales books. I'm an enterprise sales guy, so probably okay. fanatical prospecting. I think that was on a as a tip of the week, but I was I was with Jeb Blunt a few weeks ago at a conference with him, and that guy's amazing. So if people have a hard time. Sorry, go ahead. Fanatical what? Fanatical prospecting. All right. Sure. Think yeah, of that. I think I got a, I got, I got like a hundred. I'll send you a copy, Sano. I got a bunch of signed copies from that him. That sounds good. Uh, if anybody's having problems out there getting after it, you, you just read Fanatical Prospecting and you just want to just go to town on it. So it's a great book by a guy named Jeb Blunt. All right. Favorite movie? Any movie. I don't watch movies. I watch podcasts so you monkeys all day long. I don't watch movies <laughs> anymore. Question. You My watch question. movies, Matt. You're a geek. Right. I, I got it. I got it. Deadpool, because I can't wait for Deadpool tool. <laughs> or Super Troopers 2, which I haven't seen yet. But, uh, you know, some people think I look like Farver. What, 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 what do you think? I I can see that. I can definitely see yeah. that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> good looking guy. All right, last That's question. Awesome. Favorite live Facebook show on Wednesday or Thursday nights, depending on one of the hosts' uh, schedule. Well, due to firefighter restrictions, that would of course be <laughs> Robin Swivel, baby. Come on, <laughs> Robin Swivel. Love it, Matt. Thanks for coming on for the refill segment. You bet. I'm All right. here for you. We'll see you next week. Down to the lobby, you go, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, awesome. All right, well, listen. You promised some content tonight, and it was all going to be uh, relative to uh, what was it? <laughs> what did you promise? <laughs> Negotiating tactics on the buy side. Negotiating tactics on the buy side. All right. All right. So, so we did talk about this. Now it's coming back to me, right? It's coming back to you now. All right. Good. Let's talk about this one. What if I get an ex- – we're going to talk about I get an accepted offer, right? Uh, an accepted right. offer comes. And I do the due diligence, and everything looks great. What kind of what are we talking about right here? They they signed the line. There was no counter offer. Nothing, nothing. This is a straight up. This is a good deal. You get an accepted offer. You do the due diligence. Taxes aren't so bad. What are you going to call this deal? You know what we call that, Mike? Yeah. We call that the humdinger. That's the humdinger. That's that is the deal where it's like it's good to go. Now, even if it's a humdinger, even if you the deal is like so good. That you're just like, oh my god, I I can't wait. You still might go back and retrade it, right? I mean, we don't want to look overly excited. So, uh, what might you say to them? Uh, this is an accepted offer. Uh, you know, the uh, the the taxes look okay. It's a humdinger, a Scott, but I still want to retrade it. What might be something you could say to them to kind of facilitate that? You know, I off I know I offered you this amount. I will tell you, I accessed the county records today, and and I saw that the lot across the street and adjacent to the lot sold for $150 less. So I'd like to give you $100 less than my offer. All right. Well, you, you got it. That's how good you are. Awesome. Got it. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to be into it for more than this right. amount. I find that, honestly, like what Scott's talking about right now, when you talk to people and you, you know, you don't have to get all uptight and business. You can just be a person talking to another person. And, and if you are transparent and honest and you tell them, Hey, listen, you know, I'm a, I invest in lands, but I do. And you know, my numbers have to be tight. And, you know, honestly, I think I overshot this and you, and you give them a number, people will, people will move that I've actually, you can hear people take a deep breath in a deep breath out and be like, well, I didn't really want to sell for that much, but if I did, I'd want to sell it to someone like you. Legitimately people have said that because yeah. It's a breath of fresh air to deal with someone that's honest and transparent, especially in the real estate world, where sometimes there's a bad name given to people, uh, you know, in real estate. So I think that that's a great way to do it, Scott. Cheers on that one. Cheers. Cheers. Excellent. All right. Okay. So I'm going to quiz you now. All right. Okay. Let's say let's say I send you a purchase agreement, and uh, you you send it back to me, and sign on the dotted line. You're ready to sell that baby. Yeah, but you do a little due diligence on your end, and you find what do I find? You might find some issues. Some issues. The land has issues. What, like back taxes? Maybe a little bit the higher issues, than expected. They, it could be back taxes higher than expected. It could be uh, poor access to the land. It could be there's an old abandoned camper on the lot, right? Ah, I've had that. I've had that. So you, yeah, you know what you're talking about? You're talking about the deflator. That's the deflator. 
That's a deflator. That's basically something comes back and it allows you the power to go to the uh, person that you're buying from and say, listen, um, I'm really excited about buying this property and thank you for accepting my offer. But however, taxes are X, Y, Z. Or there's a wash in the property or this or that. And because of that, I can truly only offer you this much money, right? I mean, again, it comes down to transparency. It comes down to honesty. It comes down to just telling them straight up, like, this is how it is. And if you do it that way, nine times out of ten people, I mean, they know. People know. I mean, they've had this land for a long time. They know about the land. They know that uh, it's not, uh, you know, it, the value isn't there anymore. So it's definitely something. Uh, you're talking about the deflator. So that's it's how. It's the deflator. I love it. We're deflating the offer. Deflating. All right, I'm ready for the next one. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, accepted offer, and it's a due diligence fail. I mean, it's the taxes are so high. I'm not even sure I want to be into this one. Um, what, 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 what are we talking about here? I mean, it's just, it's. I don't even know if I want I to mean, get. Into this. It's just so. I mean, really, really, Mr. Smith, the only way I could take this land from you is if you paid me a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> People laugh. No, is if is if I paid you a dollar for the right. land, really. Here's the thing. We call this we call this the one dollar skittle. The one dollar skittle. Yeah. And here's the reality. <laughs> the reality is for those of you who listen and don't haven't experienced this, you truly can buy land for a couple of dollars or have it just gifted or given, not gifted, but given to you because um, the taxes are so high, you're gonna assume the back taxes. I've had property literally given to me. Um, so this is a very real occurrence. You know, when people realize when the taxes get beyond a certain point, it's like the point of no return. They are not going to bring those taxes current. They realize they're about to lose it. And so you have a lot of power and flexibility. So the $1 Skittle is actually a very true technique. It's, it's and I would tell you that the $1 Skittle, Mike, I've had, you know, there's some aha moments in this business. We've talked about mine before. The first one was my first sale. The second one was boot camp. My third one was actually probably about a week after boot camp. Uh, a lady gave me her land for a dollar. Yes. And, and it ended up uh, being a great deal. Yeah. I mean, I, it took, took me a while to sell. Took me a while to sell. Not a lot of risk I, in the pot, right? <laughs> right. But I didn't, have to, I didn't have to pay the taxes right away, right? So I sat on it for a little while, ended up selling it, and it ended up being a great deal. Awesome. Well, I hate to interrupt this. We have to come back to it, but we're at the 1030 segment. Uh, what you we're 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 in the we're the next segment. We can't, we all right, can't. all right. I know. There's so much energy right now. Though. There's so much energy right now with the negotiating tactics. Why? All right, we'll all right. I thought this was a laid back show, and you're you're like all regimented with the schedule. You know. All right, all right. So we're gonna go to the next one then. All right. I I, I agree. I dig you digress. I agree and I digress. All right. How about this? I mail you an offer. I mean, right. it, it accept, there's an accepted offer that comes in. And not only do they have one property, they have 10. Maybe they have 20. Maybe they have 30 properties. What's going to happen now? How, how are you going to approach that? 10, 20, or 30 properties. Maybe more. You know, I'm talking to All right. this is a belt deal. You know, this is something to come across you. And this happens actually very frequently, right? It comes. It happens very frequently in our business where one person may have multiple properties. So, right. What are we talking? All right. About? So, Mike, we're going to call this the take it or leave it. The take it or leave it. I love it. Tell me how you play this out. How? What? Few approaches. Once you give me one, one way of approaching this. All right. So, yeah, we talked about two approaches. The the first one is is the takedown. Okay. Okay. Miss, Mr. Smith, I understand you have twenty lots. Here's the thing. I, I will buy five of those a month for the next four months. And uh, you did your math wrong. It'll be five months. But you said 25, right? I thought I said 20. Oh, I, I misunderstood. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me. There's three kinds of mathematicians those who can add and those who can't. Right, right. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I, we're going to do a takedown deal, right? We're going to buy five a month for four months. And okay. I can guarantee you. If you do not have the capacity to do a takedown deal, that someone in this community will help you do it, which is an awesome thing about this community. You go to the Facebook group or you message somebody in the Facebook group that maybe, I don't know, has left an impression on you. Uh, the, it, it, it's an amazing community for doing deals, right? With, right. With, with, in a collaborative uh, 
nothing. Look at this. A great comment from Shannon Schaefer. Great scenario. We're dealing with it right now and don't know what to do. Awesome. See? Hey, our show is relevant. Not only is it fun, it's relevant. I like that. So tell me more about that. If you're doing a takedown, what if what if I offered this? What if my offer was five hundred dollars for a lot or a thousand? Let's call five hundred, right? And the guy says, "Hey, I got ten of them. Is that five thousand? Am I going to pay the guy five thousand five hundred times ten? Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that?" No, I mean, you know, I, I think it was if it was a bulk deal situation, which we'll get into, uh, I'd, I'd cut the price even a little bit more. But uh, yeah, I, I would probably uh, decrease my decrease my offer by. I don't know if it's five hundred dollar lot. I decrease my offer by at least a hundred dollars each lot, right. maybe one hundred fifty. BJ's of all land deals, right? Uh, you know, um, uh, BJ Sam's Club. It's like it's this is the place where you get you buy in bulk, right? Yeah, and exactly. You buy in bulk, you get a huge deal, right? So no one's gonna no one's gonna uh, you know get like you know uh, a ten pack of uh, I don't know cookies or something, right? And they can pay the same. Pay the same price, exactly. Right? So what you do is basically tell them, hey, listen, I'm going to buy them all. If they don't want to do the takedown and do the five, 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 like you said, it's basically, okay, well, guess what? I'll give you X amount of dollars because they're looking at a large amount of money up front. And maybe it's, it could be half, honestly. It could be $250 yeah. instead of $500 for 10 So $2,500, I'll give you $2,500 cash today, and I'll take them all off your hand. So you actually really have uh, a lot of leverage in that scenario because you're bringing all, there's a lot of money coming to the table. So uh, well, that that kind of segues into the next uh, take it or leave it deal, right? I mean, uh, we we got the we got the bulk deal. So I mean, yes. Instead of taking them down, instead of taking them down over four or five months, yeah, that take was the them bulk. down all at once, right. baby. Take it take it down with the bulk deal, and the bulk deal means you're going to get a discount, right? You're gonna you're gonna get these at a, at a sweet price because you're taking them all at one time. So um, that that's true. So take it or leave it is. Either a takedown or a bulk purchase, right? I mean, it's it's one of the two. That's really what you're working with at that point, right? Yeah, and I and I just have to say, I think we all know in this community who the king of the take of the bulk deal is. <laughs> Who's that? You, dude. <laughs> no, you you're too kind. You're you too like kind. bulk deals. You like them. Well, yeah. I mean, who doesn't? I mean, you get into such a great. Price, right? I mean, you can buy lots at ridiculous prices when you buy a whole bunch of them. So, absolutely, um, absolutely, do love it. Awesome. So, what do we got? One left? Well, yeah, we do. We have another. What if I'm like, no, I, I, I want this price for my land, Scott. I want this price, and I'm not budging, right? And you know, say you're you're offering me seven fifty. I'm not taking less than a thousand. What are you gonna do? All right, Mike. Here's what I'll do for you. Tell me. I'm going to give you 50 bucks, and uh, you agree to, to not sell that property for two months. So I'm going to try to find a buyer for you. That's one option, right? Oh, nice word. Oh, that's because we call this the optionator. Optionator. That's right. I love it. This is the optionator. This is the optionator. Now, different people do options in different ways, right? Some people... I think when I initially started a couple of years ago, I, I said to a guy, hey, you know, I really don't, I, I really can't pay you this much for the lot, but let me see if I can, you know, potentially buy, potentially find a buyer for you, right? Right. So can we make an agreement? If I send you 50 bucks now, can you, can you just not sell your lot for two months? And uh, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try my darndest to, to find a buyer for this lot. So, so that's an option, right? I love it. And look at this. Optionator. Shannon, I think she may be referring to, uh, you know, when due diligence. Now, listen, honestly, I think the price comes first in my mind, Shannon. I think that if I'm looking, you know, of course, we need to do due diligence on any property we buy, right? So if I, but if I have 50 properties or 30 properties and I know the area roughly for the pricing, I'm not going to waste a whole bunch of time until I nail down a solid price. So, to me, the offer, the accepted offer, the price comes first, right? I want to know that I got to – if I get a sweet deal and I get them to agree at half of what I offer for one lot for all of them, you know, so instead of 500 per lot, 250 for all 10 or 20 or 30, uh, then I'm excited and I'm moving forward with the uh, with the due diligence at that point. So um, I think – and the other, op the other option, the optionator, as you said, Scott. The optionator. The reality is we do work with a number of investors. When I tell people, listen – I work with a number of investors, right? Uh, and it's a close-knit community. 
give me some time. I could probably find someone that uh, would 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 want to buy that property, you know. And they may even be the one that closed with it. You, you could have this deal taken over by somebody else. You could sell the option. So uh, that's another possibility. And the reality is, if two months come by, have gone by, and nobody is interested, you can't sell. You go back and you have a very real conversation with the seller and say, "Listen, I tried." reached out to my large investment pool of uh you know my pool of investors i've tried to work with different people and it's no they're not budging and well, i can't do that thousand but i can do whatever that number 750 and if they don't want to move at that point then you circle back to them another time but a lot of times that can uh, bring them uh to move so that's the leave it deal there's leave it deals too right i mean you can't uh you can't always give in to these uh to these demands Refill your drinks. Thank you, Aaron. I will do that. Hey, uh, Mike, can you can you throw that comment up for my wife a little bit ago? Because which? Okay, let me back it up. I'd kind of like to sir. I kind of like to. Uh, Is that the one where she says I look better in the robe? No, she she's asking about my beard. She wants to take a little, take a little informal oh, survey. All right, oh, all right. Let's see that. Uh, beard or no beard? I am gonna say beard. I don't want to say nice. anybody, but I, I'm I'm thinking he's got like this. Uh, Really sophisticated James Bond look going about him, you know, uh, like uh, look how white it is. <laughs> <laughs> I get wild. that from I get that from my dad. He may be watching right now. Wow, nice. Yeah, I, let, let's hear the I, comments. I, beard or no beard? All right, Mike. A, Mike, where are we at? Well, for that ten thirty segment, we're going to do it at ten forty two. It's time for the ten thirty ten forty two segment. <laughs> oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> All right, you ready? Ready for the shove it quote of the week. <laughs> what is this all about? Well, basically, if you mail in high volume, some things are going to happen. One of them is going to be you're going to get some yellow letters back, some return addresses. Okay, no big deal. And then you're going to get uh, you're going to get some people that are going to call and they're going to be really angry. And then you're going to get some people going to call and counter and they're going to get the golden ticket, the accepted offer. But some people do get colorful, right? When they say, "Hey," they they're not always like. No thanks, and I really appreciate you offering me money for my land. That's really not. Uh, so we we like to highlight the uh, the shove it quote of the week or the you know. So what do you got, Scott? Bring it in. All right, I'm pulling it up to, here. Okay, what, is it, it's a kid friendly show. Do I have to bleep you out because some of these get colorful? Right? I need to. Oh, no, 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 no. no. The, these are going to be. Love you, love you, honey. All right, so <laughs> my wife's very excited about something. All right, so this is from uh, Joey Chirello. Okay. All right, Joe. Uh, he published in the Facebook group uh, this week my new favorite reply to offer letter. Quote, do not offend me, period. Keep, spelled C-E-A-P, keep your money, go to Burger King, and buy you a burger. I think that's the, I think that's the French word for keep, seep. <laughs> I'm not sure. Keep your money, go to Burger King, and buy you a burger. That that is original. <laughs> so that came from Joey Chiarello. I love it, Joey. Great quote. Uh, uh, you know, that's a that's a great. Joey quote. Mark Podolsky has joined us. Uh, <laughs> Mark, we are keeping it clean. I I I, I stay on top of Scott Bossman. And, right. Uh, make sure. But uh, Mike, Mark, you were live on the nightcap at at uh, boot camp not, not too long ago, two weeks ago. We had the Godfather of the community on live uh, live at at uh, boot camp. That was phenomenal. That was a great show. That was a ton of fun. A lot of fun. Mark, you got to go back and listen to the negotiating tactics. There are some term. There are some terms that uh, <laughs> I I can't go into it right now. Looks like uh, we got a lot of people going with the no beard. By the way, and Mark, we're taking a little what? No, Does Scott, you keep the beard or not? So, uh, we're, 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 Mark, what do you think? Beard or no beard? Uh, Sean Connery, I think yes, but uh, I think most people are saying no. So I think I look older with the beard. <laughs> you look. Older. So we went over a lot of tactics, a lot of good. Look, I have them all written down here. Anybody wants the uh, cliff notes, write me. I'll provide them to you. Um, you know, so we have a variety of tactics on, and that again was only on the this two sides of our equation, right? The buy side and the sell side. Uh, we're on the buy side. What we were talking about, but uh, pretty cool, huh? Those are some good, good quotes. Good, good stuff. We got a lot of good stuff going on this show. All right, hey, do a giveaway. Do you? You kind of had some talk about that. Are we doing a giveaway tonight, or is it 
Mike, we, we, dude, we have to do the, dude, buddy, we have to do the giveaways. Well, the birds okay? the we've been saying, we thank you, Mark. We've been saying uh, for weeks that we're going to do the div- do the giveaway. Okay, so how are we going to do it? All right, so well, I got I have this handy dandy little app on my phone that is uh, you, you pick a name out of a hat, right? What are we giving away? Well, we are giving away first and foremost a free one hour coaching call. No way! Yeah, with either you or myself. All right. All right. So. I'm going to click the button here on my. Who's in this? Who who who's in the running here? Who who? Can... Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me let me tell you. I painstakingly have gone through every comment of every nightcap episode, which I think this is number ten. This is a big one. Let's do a few giveaways. I think that uh, we can give away a free hour coaching call, and I think Mark just gave us. Um, the rights to give away one of his Dirt Rich books. I oh, think. So then we have three giveaways tonight. Uh, Mark, I'm, I'm sorry, Mark. I'm going to roll this. I think you're saying we can give away one of your books, so we're going to do it. That's all right. Okay. We'll decision. We're going to give away one of his books. We're doing it. Okay, so here is the first name picked at random. we win what? This is for the one-hour coaching call? Free one-hour coaching call. All right, let's go. I hope Ready? I I hope here I we go. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see if that comes up there. Uh, yeah. Name picked it with Barbara Thibodeau. Yeah. Barbara Thibodeau. She throws a nice. lot of comments up. That's a good person to win because she's active on this uh, on this show quite frequently. So, Barbara, congrats. She's very active. Please. And we had a – unfortunately, we had some technical difficulties a couple weeks ago when we tried to have her on. So, we got to have her on again because she, I think, would have I, – I think she'd have a great time on the show and have a – shutting up, she says. <laughs> Like oh my gosh, <laughs> I love it. She's awesome. excited. That's awesome. All right, hey, not approved. We give away. Let's do the book now. Book giveaway. Okay. okay, we're gonna do the book. Here we go. You ready? Here we go. Here we go. We got a couple. I don't know. We got like a hundred. I don't know. Seventy-five names in here. Eighty names, something like that. Here we go. Right, Here's the book. Work. Free dirt rich book for. Can't see. You gotta back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Brandy. All right. There we go. Brandy free. Nice. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to go on a limb and say that it'll probably be signed as well. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. That's very Mark, nice. Mark, you got to sign it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. Awesome. So, so, so wait, we're going we're to wait to the very end for the last giveaway. I right? think so, too, because we do have another segment. We do. It was a time for that segment already with – we, you know, we had a lot of talk about negotiating tactics, so our segment. It's, it's already 10 to 11 where you are. It's like I'm surprised you're not sleeping. Look at this. Love signed books. Nice. <laughs> you, Randy must have lots of signed books. That's awesome. <laughs> Jeannie, okay, ready? Nice talking with Jeannie today. Jeannie, great to have you on the show. Awesome. Are you ready for the next segment? Um, I'm not. Oh. I don't even know if I'm ready for that one. but I don't know if I'm ready either, but you know what? On Let's Nightcap, this is what we do. Dun, dun, dun. It's the You Complete Me segment. <laughs> what movie is this from, Mike? Um, I know that it's not Mission Impossible. That's all I know. <laughs> That's all I know. It's not Mission Impossible. Jerry Maguire, Mike. Jerry Maguire. Oh, Jerry Maguire. Show me the money. I Show know you're not a sports fan, but it's it's not a sports movie. It's a love movie. Okay. Love the movie. Ah, okay. All right. I got gotcha. you. So what, what this, this segment typically is about one of us will start a phrase, and the other one will complete it. Since Scott does complete me, and I'm going to argue uh, probably pretty convincingly that I complete him. So this is <laughs> – but you see, no, there was no fight there. Look at him. He's just agreeing. He's just – I'm just, uh, yeah, this one is tough because you got to be quick on your feet. I'm kind of one of those guys you got to think about things a little bit and then I come up. I don't want you to think about it. We don't want you to think about it. Um, all right. All right, Scott. I'm going to make it simple. I'm going to go first. You're going to go. Okay. All right. Okay. So I, uh, let's see. You have a mailed offer out, right? You mailed an offer out to somebody, right? And yeah. they accept the offer. They accepted the offer, okay? Yeah. 
in your due diligence, you find out that there is a problem. Oh. We're talking about a deflator, by the way. Yeah, we are talking about a deflator. Yeah, I'm going to parlay on to our negotiation here. It is not a humdinger. It's not a humdinger. It's not a guaranteed knock it out of the park. It's a deflator. You find out that they have – your offer was $500, right? And you find out they have $200 in back taxes. What do you do? Oh, Mr. Smith, I really don't want to be more than $500 into this property. So I will send you a check today for $300 and pay your back taxes. That's really nice of you. But my name is not Smith, it's Zeno. Oh, sorry. <laughs> How was that? Is that good? good? You know, I know. You know, typically we don't send money without uh, without having a, a recorded deed. But you know what? I'll be honest. When it comes to two hundred dollars, I've talked to a lot of people. I've I've sent it out many times and never had, never had a problem. I don't advise everybody, but I have a very good sense of uh, you know talking to people. And if it's a couple hundred dollars um, and you're having a good rapport with somebody and you know that's going to seal a deal and you make a whole bunch of money, I've done it. So. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to you. You're you're totally right, Mike. I mean, uh, the longer you do this, and and I'm in a profession where I deal with uh, all walks of life, right? So I'm pretty good at reading people, at uh, determining where on the spectrum they may be as far as honesty. Um. <laughs> <laughs> truthfulness, whatever. So I don't know. When you're talking to people on the phone, uh, as soon as you get, I mean, the more and more and more you're talking to people, uh, you're able to decipher their personality. And yes, I've done the same. I have trusted people by sending them money first uh, without the deed in my hand. Well, you know, Eric Peterson just joined us. I think Mark's on We should review real quick. We get an accepted off, Eric. We came up with some very simple terms to keep people kind of just uh, on target. Accepted offer. Due diligence comes back great. This is a knock it out of the park. What's it called? The humdinger. The humdinger. Now, you still might retrade the humdinger, but that's that's a nice one. Now you get an ex accepted offer, and you find out that there's something going wrong. There's something that's, like, piqued your interest in terms of back taxes, Something's going on. So, uh, so, so, what, what, uh, what would we call this one? We're gonna have to do what? We're gonna call that deal the deflator. The deflator. All right. Now, now, how about again? Accepted offer. We're reviewing this for everybody now, right? And the taxes are so high, right? And maybe I got a five hundred dollar offer, and the taxes are like four hundred dollars, right? Four hundred fifty dollars. Do you have to walk away from it? Not necessarily, right? We call this the what? The one dollar. The one dollar skittle. The one dollar skittle. Just tell them, hey, listen, this thing has got so many back taxes owed on it. You know they're not going to make it good. Say, I'll tell you what. I'll assume the risk. I'll assume the responsibility. I can pay you a dollar. And listen, we've talked about this. We've had this happen. This is real. This is no joke. Property given to us. Property for a dollar. Property for twenty five dollars. This is real. So there's always money to be made. Uh, the other one is you get an accepted offer, and they find out not only do they have one property, they have ten, twenty, thirty properties. So it's a take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. Two, two, two simple ways to go about this. One is a what? If I want to buy two or three or four a month. A takedown. A takedown. You just want to mitigate your risk. You take a few down, take a few down, and that's fine. Or, no, I'm only selling all of them. Great. I offered you 500 for one. You have 10 of them. It's going to be $2,500, $250 each, right? We really can get a smoking deal because they're looking at $2,500. You can really make a great deal. So that's a take it or leave it. And then we have the last one we talked about was the – Optionator. Optionator. It's like, no, what? I will not take less than a thousand. You offer me seven fifty. Not taking less than a thousand. And you can say, hey, listen, I work with a pool of investors. I work with a community of like-minded people. I have a buyer's list. Let me see what I can do. I, I'll, I'll lock it up for a couple of dollars, ten dollars. You know, it doesn't have to be much. Twenty-five dollars. And if it doesn't sell, you go back to them and say, sorry, I've done my best. I've tried my hardest. Nobody's interested. But I can still offer you now probably like 500, right? You really bring them down at that point. So uh, look at this. Eric Peterson just had a couple of those Skittle deals. I love it. Nice. Mark, I love the $1 Skittle. <laughs> he does not love sending money first, though. No, I know. I know. It's true. Mark, we, and that's why, you know, here's the other thing that's incredible about our business is the fact that we have Simply File. So as soon as you send someone a deed, they print it, they notarize it. They send you back a scanned PDF copy just to show 
you want them to show you that they've actually uh, uh, you know, done their part. And we're going to assume the risk now and send them the money for the real deal. But that PDF is recordable on Simply File. We're protected. So Mark is absolutely correct. Love it. All right. Awesome. Let's go to our uh, final giveaway. All right, final Ooh. giveaway. What can I win? I this this is a very sought after item. I I mean, as Mark Podolsky would say at boot camp, this has at least a two hundred fifty thousand dollar value because oh, the popularity of this show with twenty four viewers. <laughs> it's still we're on. The, we've been on for fifty six minutes, and we still have twenty four people watching live. That's we? pretty good, though. All right, so I'm not tooting our horn, but I think we're about to go Netflix live. So let's go. We will be sending you a robe. A robe. Get out. Who? Who is it? Tim Who's Kerrigan. A robe. Tim Kerrigan gets a robe. That is incredible. Love Remember it. Member of the club. <laughs> we will be having Tim on. For an interview very soon. I don't think Matt Forbes is happy because he's like, please come. Uh, I'm sorry, Matt. You hey, hate Matt. And here's the thing, though. GD, thank you. Matt, Matt Forbes, I will. Matt Forbes, I will. <laughs> Matt Forbes, I will tell you there were three of these robes left on Amazon, and uh, the. Uh, Mike really? and I, Mike and I, well, Mike and I got ours for nightcap, and then uh, there was one left, and it was only a medium. So, big Matt Forbes, <laughs> that was not an option for you anyway, my friend. I love this one here, Mark saying, Eric, you probably stole that deal from me. That for those of you don't, you know, you have to go back to some of the earlier podcasts where we talk about, uh, you know, Eric uh, Luke Skywalker uh, Peterson and uh, his. Why does he get that nickname? Because he is stealthy. I tell him it's like no country for old men. Mark should just give him a backpack full of money and send him to Colorado. He'll come back with hundreds of dollars. I know he will. He's incredible. No country for old men. The Merrick says, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just jealous because I'm the biggest Star Wars fan in the world. <laughs> Mark says he wants his cut. Nice. This has been a great show. I, I mean, I'm not saying that because it's our show. I'm saying it because it's been a great show. It's, I'm glad you could join me tonight. Oh, there you go. That goes back to an earlier show. Listen, this has been – any final questions for us before we uh, uh, before we sign off? Uh, Jeannie, yes, we love the robes too. Except it is, it's hotter than a nursing home in here. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Tim Carrig, a big winner. That's uh, it, Mark, New England style. I like it. Nice. Oh, Karen, I'm sorry. Ken, Ken would look good in a robe in one of these – small. no. We'll see what we can do. I know Ken will look good. All right. There will be future giveaways. There will be. It's a large. Oh, Aaron. She, oh. You, you uh, bet, Big Mac oh, Forbes, it's a large. I'm sorry. It's not It's not going to work. No glance shout out. Good to see you, Bill. Awesome. Great show, Bob Thibodeau. Mark, what's Mark say? I'm going. Hey. <laughs> I'm getting Eric back. Entering Escobar. Four. Nice. Wow. We can have <laughs> We're going to get the Godfather back on the show. You know, we had him live in boot camp. we got to bring him back on, you know? Yeah, when the, when the audio is a little better. and Rumor has it we're going to have a whole show with uh, Tate Litchfield. Nice. Yes, yeah. Excellent. Obi-Wan Kenobi himself is going to be here. Awesome. I know you hey, Mike, can I, can I make a couple plugs here? Yeah, of course. I'll just okay. drink my 10 minutes. I can't believe it's been an hour. We should probably let these folks go to bed. But uh, so uh, – yeah. If, uh, Eric Peterson, maybe you could do me a favor because I don't have uh, typing capabilities here. But uh, if you could go up and throw, go, go ahead and throw up this uh, web address, www.thelandgeek.com slash training. Mike Zano and myself would love to speak to any of you about flight school or one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, the next flight school starts May 15th. And uh, flight school is an amazing program. It's where the Burnets started. I think they, I think uh, as they went through that journey, uh, it was a huge validation uh, process for them. And uh, maybe, maybe Eric's not going to do that for us. Sorry. I mean, well, actually, I know how to do it right here. Can you do it? Because I can't do it. Yeah, I know. I, you know, I, you know. We, we we keep talking about how we have to upgrade our technical abilities. Let me try it. What do you want? What do you oh, want? there it is. He got it. Eric got it? Eric got it. Eric's, Eric with the comfort there. Perfect. 
Uh, Flight School Rocks team. Scott Todd is out there. I know Alex Trebek is out there watching this. Alex Trebek. I I, I know he is because uh, he's a big fan of the show. And he, you James know, Bond. He's usually, in the background. Usually we can we can uh, cajole him out with some comments. You know, it'd be cool awesome. to see him. Mark Rodolski put up there. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, uh, Mark. Tate and all then the one, and then one last thing. If if anyone is interested in Flight School, uh, Mike and I are having a live Q and A session. Another one. Um, we talk. We love being live. We just yeah. We live. <laughs> we're, we. I guess we could wear the robes. We might scare some people away. Uh, but we we are having a live Q and A session on Monday, May seventh at nine p.m. Eastern. For anyone interested in our investor toolkit or flight school or one on one coaching programs, we, we're going to have a little bit of a round table discussion about these things and uh, and chat with you. So May seventh. Nice. Oh, look at that. We got Team Bossman. Nice. Nice. Thanks, this, Barbara. This has been a great show. That's uh, my first Team Bossman. Uh, that's that's a big moment. I, let, let me do this for you. Let me do this. <laughs> Here it is again. We'll leave it up for the remaining part of the show. <laughs> so, uh, John and Valerie, we want to thank them. We want to thank Matt coming on for the refill. Um, it's been a great show. We gave away some cool prizes. This is uh, – this has been great. We came away with some great new terms. Uh, I think the most probably remember, uh, memorable one would be the $1 Skittle. But, uh, $1 Skittle. I love it. <laughs> and the Humdinger. And the Deflator. Right. I mean, really. And listen, anybody there who wants us to talk about a certain subject. Yeah, for sure. Send us uh, any comments. We'll, we, you know, we're open. We will definitely, uh, uh, definitely, uh, you know. We'll take any kind of uh, suggestions. We, we love talking, as you can tell. <laughs> One of us more than the other. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to judge you for that. <laughs> All right. Well, well, hey, you know what? I have a toast. This is a sad part of the show. I don't really like to sign off, but let's do it. I know. Get but I, I have a toast. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Wait a minute. We should bring. Uh, I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna bring uh, John and Valerie and Matt back up for the final. Oh, point. they're all still in the lobby. Of course they are. I don't let. Them, I don't release them. Here we go. They're all here for the final. Uh, for the final toast. Go ahead. That Scott. is awesome. I'm glad you guys stuck around. All right, here we go. Here, here is my toast for the evening. In victory, you deserve whiskey. In defeat, you need it. <laughs> That's Cheers. awesome. Cheers. <laughs> I, I'm that, totally out. So sad. That is a variation on uh, a toast uh, quoted by Napoleon Bonaparte. Just so you all know, he said champagne, but I'm not a champagne guy, so I took the liberty to change it to whiskey. Sean Connery. That's right. Remind, remind me of Sean Connery. That's what it is. And yeah, yeah. Sean Connery, a la Saturday Night Live, uh, uh, Alex Trebek, Jeopardy. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Mike. I'll I appreciate that. I'll for a thousand, Trebek. Hey, thank, <laughs> thank you, Trebek. Thank <laughs> you. John and Valerie, thank you so much for coming on and sharing. Matt, thank you. Um, uh, we'll have you back next week as long as you uh, still love us. And uh, we'll <laughs> go for it. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. And uh, cheers. Cheers. See you next Bye. week. Still alive. Watch out, guys.